according to Matthew chapter 25, he's going to ask us only six questions. Did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? Did you visit the prisoner? Did you bring the stranger in? Did you give water to the thirsty? And on Hope TV, yeah, the fundraising strong con air bam of fear. Yeah, two days go one million. No, be a my intensity, sir. You bet me one million. You bet donate to be near their support. The government of Ghana fund our establishment. You bet to turn near my near the BIA hospitals. A fame of bro for we see an Indian car. Sabre, you want to share or be at the field. You know, you are in. Yes, so within these two weeks, and yet me, I do it. They are born. Yeah, Kai, sir. Faith without works is dead. GDI, you man, you know. A GD away, and in Tianxia, but see a back in GD, you know, with a new man. Now, young quiet to me, yeah, as a TV station, we need your support to support this go one million campaign fundraising of Hope Television. You can send your donation to us through merchant number five four seven one three two. You can preface your message with Hope Fundraising, and I'll pass all your bank transfers as well. Your number is 6010190657. Zenith Bank Head Office, Branch, Accra. God richly bless you. Hope Channel, Changing Lives.
our heads as we pray. Wherever you find yourself, join us by bowing your head as we pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. We thank you for the power of your word. We are gathered today again to listen to your word. We plead and pray. Let your spirit take absolute control. Please, Lord, touch my lips of clay. Let me speak your word with clarity, with authority, in the name of Jesus. Not I, but Christ. Be honored, loved, and exalted. Not I, but Christ. Be seen, be known, and be heard. Not I, but Christ. In every look and action. Not I, but Christ. In every thought and word, in Jesus' name, amen. I welcome you to today. Those of you watching across the globe, on the internet, in your homes, every aspect of life, wherever you find yourself, you're watching us. This is a 10 day of a revival that has been conducted on Hope TV Ghana. And we are so excited that you can join us. Uh, I hope you had a good day. A couple of you have sent messages across, and uh, it's a privilege to have you again today. This is day number two, and we hope it's going to get better. It's going to get exciting. Tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend's friend that every night, 7 p.m. GMT here at this place, we will be gathered. Before we open the world, those of you who have been asking that you want to send questions, you want to say prayer requests, you'll see uh, the numbers that you want to contact us with will be rolling on your screen as you see it. Please, any question you have beginning tomorrow will be answering question, prayer requests, and as the days go, we're going to share with you things that will be done so that we can engage. Those of you watching via the internet, if you have questions, you can just pull them wherever you might be watching from. Let us hear from you as we study together. But as I always do, it was Jesus himself who said, if you continue in my words, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Can you say an amen out there? I want to make to you four promises. Promise number one is the Bible is going to be the bedrock of our study. The reason is the Bible means what it says and says just what it means. Promise number two, you are going to be enlightened irrespective of who you are. The Bible says when the Bible is preached, there is enlightenment. Promise number three, you are going to be challenged to make the most important decision of your life. And promise number four, your life and mine will never be the same. Welcome to day number two. Our broader theme is through the crisis. Through the crisis. For today we will be dealing with a very important subject that is titled the crisis of dying lamps. The crisis of dying lamps. You see, there is a global crisis. Someone asked that what is happening to our world, deep within every heart, the question resounds, 
Have we come to the end of civilization? Is this the last generation to exist on earth? How will it all end? Will we wait for the inevitable to happen? Or is there a permanent solution to the crisis facing us? When you look at our world from the social point of view, immorality is on a rampage. Abortion is on the increase. Men sleep with anything that allow the self the least. Fathers are having sex with their own children. One priest said, Extramarital sex or affair is another form of communication and it is morally right. In the wake of these diseases, pandemics, epidemics, you name them, the question we ask is, how do you pass through this crisis? Yesterday we dealt with the crisis in the land. It is the crisis of all these things. And we looked at the crisis in a very special way. In, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, Jesus says, The crisis we see, the reason for worry is because of food, is because of drink, and is because of raiment, if you permit, is because of where to lay our head. So yesterday, from God's word, God told us that we should not seek for these Gentiles, look for them. We should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto it. And today, we want to look at the crisis of dying lamps. The crisis of dying lamps. This message today is a message first for myself. It's a message to call me and ask me some very critical question that demand answers. If you are just like me, then this message is also for you. Take your Bibles. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. If, if, if you watch the book of Matthew quite carefully, Matthew chapter 25, you look at verse 1 to verse 13, it deals with the parable of the wise and the, the foolish virgins. When you look at Matthew very carefully, Matthew chapter 25 from verse 14 to verse 30, it deals with the parable of the talent. Matthew 25 from verse 31 down through to verse 46 deals with the Son of Man will judge the nations. All this deals with uh, the eschatology. It deals with end time event. It deals with the coming of Jesus. Our object of study today is Matthew 25 from verse 1 to verse 13. Simple message with an unsimple theme. The Bible says, and I read, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Verse 2, Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oils with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. Verse 5, but while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Verse 7, then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. Take note of that. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lambs are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you, but go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly I say unto you, I do not know you. Verse 13, Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. This is the word of the Lord. Our subject today, the crisis of dying lamps. As indicated, Parables of the talent. 
The Son of Man will come in his glory. Jesus was seated one day on Mount Olive. And then he saw a procession, a group of people, they were preparing for a marriage. If you permit today, they were preparing for a wedding. Whilst Jesus was watching with his disciples, it was in the evening. In the Near Eastern culture, people have weddings, if you permit, uh, for seven days and seven nights. It's a moment of rejoicing, a moment of celebration, a moment of excitement, a moment where hearts are swelled with praise. Why? A bride and a bridegroom have met. When you study the Bible quite carefully, whenever Jesus wants to teach, he likens the kingdom of God to something. Christ, you see, he uses simple messages. Jesus' sermons are simple. Even children must understand. So Jesus will say in Matthew 13, verse 44, he likened the kingdom of God to the hidden treasure. You read Matthew 13, verse, verse 45 to verse 46, he likened the kingdom of God to the pearl of great pride. Jesus likened the kingdom of God to the household treasure. He likened the kingdom of God to a yeast. The kingdom of God to a mustard seed. The kingdom of God is, is likened to the sprouting of a seed. Jesus likened the kingdom of God to the dragnet. So in this Matthew 25, Christ likened the kingdom of God not to any other thing. He likened it to virgins. He likened it to a wedding procession. Our subject today, the crisis of dying lambs. I can see and imagine in my own mind's eye. Christ saw virgins. They were guarded. They were excited. They were waiting for something special to happen. Whilst this was going on, our test was brought in context. Matthew 25. Christ gave a very excellent insight. We're going to break these 13 verses. We're going to break them down and then we're going to see. May I hasten to add, revival always comes. If you study the Bible very carefully, anytime we are desirous of a revival, revival comes through the study of the word. My words cannot spark a revival. No other mortal's word can spark a revival. In a quest for revival, we need to anchor a revival situated on none other but God's unerring word. I'm going to use my script as I read. Matthew 25 verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lambs and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their, their lambs and took no oils with them. So in this, we saw the first category. Within this context, Jesus is speaking about the coming of his kingdom. He's talking about heavenly things. He's talking about things that are going to happen just before he comes. He said, I liken the kingdom of God unto ten virgins. And one wise, another said they were foolish. And then it is said that these two groups, in other words, before the coming of Jesus, only two groups are going to be represented in the world. The group that are wise. Then another group, they are the, the foolish ones. Only two classes of people in the book Christ Object Lesson, which I'm going to depend on extensively today. Ellen White made a startling statement. The two classes of waters represent the two classes who profess to be waiting for their law. If you watch very carefully, these virgins, they were waiting for the bridegroom like the church today in anticipation for the return of a law. They were Adventists. They were people who were waiting for, 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 for the greatest event in earth history symbolically. These virgins were not only wise or foolish, they were described that they are virgins. In other words, they, 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 they profess a faith that is pure. Take note. Jesus says there are ten virgins, five wise, five foolish, representing the two classes in the church, not just in the world. May I hasten to say this message is a message meant for believers. 
It's a message meant for those who have sacrificed and say they have surrendered to the law. It's not a message meant for those who have never identified with the law. This is an internal message. It is an in-house message written by God himself so that we living in the end of earth history. It will serve as our admonition. It will serve as our learning. It will serve as our warning. Two classes, the wise and the foolish. And Ellen White made a statement that they are called virgins because they profess a pure faith. These virgins believe. They believe in the doctrine of God. They believe by that in the Holy Scriptures. They believe in the Trinity. They believe in God the Father. They believe in God the Son. They believe in God the Holy Spirit. These virgins believe. They believe in the doctrine of humanity. They believe in the great controversy. They believe in the life, death, and the resurrection of Jesus. They believe in the experience of salvation. They believe in the growing in Christ. The virgins believe. They are virgins because they were carrying a pure faith. They believe in the doctrine of salvation. They believe not just that, in the doctrine of humanity. They believe in creation. They believe in the nature of humanity. They believe in the doctrine of the church. They believe in the church. They believe in the remnant and its mission. They believe in the unity in the body of Christ. They believe in baptism. Their belief is in the Lord's Supper, spiritual gift and ministration, the gift of prophecy. They are virgins. Indeed, they proclaim, they profess a pure faith. This virgins... They believe, they believe in the doctrine of Christian living. They believe in the law of God. They believe in the Sabbath. They believe in stewardship. They believe in Christian behavior, in marriage and family. They are virgins and they believe. The virgins believe, they believe in the doctrine of restoration. They believe in Christ's ministry in the heavenly sanctuary. The virgins believe. They believe in the second coming of Jesus. They believe in the death and the resurrection of Jesus. They believe in the millennium and the end of sin. These virgins, they believe, they believe in the new earth. Will you say an amen out there? Just like us, they believe. Within the church, two classes of people, all of them called virgins. In fact, not just virgins, they were expectant virgins. They were expecting the return of their bridegroom. And they believe. Somewhere it is said, and I quote, The Seventh-day Adventists have been called by God as a peculiar people, separated from the world by the great cleaver of truth. He has cut them out from the query of the world and brought them into connection with himself. He has made them his representatives and has called them to be ambassadors for him in the last work of salvation. The greatest word of truth ever instructed to the mortals. The most solemn and most fearful warning ever sent by God to man has been committed to them to be given to the world. Testimony for the Churches, Volume 7, page 138. Like the virgins, we are just like them. These virgins were not just virgins. The Bible says, that whilst they were virgins, I'm talking about Matthew chapter 25. I'm talking about verse 1 through to verse number 13. Take your Bibles and follow me as we do this together tonight. We are talking about the subject, the crisis of dying lambs. Matthew 25, verse 2. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lambs and took no oil. Take notes. This five virgins, this five wise, and the five foolish, they are not only expecting their Lord. They are not only virgins. Look at the intercession. Look at the community. That look at the things that are common with them. They were all or they are all virgins. They are all expecting a bridegroom. They are all carrying their lambs. The Bible says they came with their lambs. By the lamb is the representation of the word of God. The two classes 
which represent those who will stay in the world before Jesus come, they have the lamp with them. The Bible says in Psalm 119 verse 105, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. In the dark days and in the crisis moment of the world, they have the word of God with them. They have the word of God with them. The word of God is a lamp. So they know the word. They profess the word. They understand the word. They knew it was time for the bridegroom to come. The Bible says the lamp that they were carrying. Look at Je verse, verse 1. Matthew 25 verse 1. Then the kingdom of heaven it shall be likened unto, unto ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. They took the word of God and they went out to meet the bridegroom. The word used that represents the lamp. If you do a good study, you can see that mentioned about five times alone in the book of Matthew. You can see that same rendition in John 18 verse 3. You can see it in Acts 20 verse 8. You can see it in Revelation 4 verse 5. Revelation 8 verse 10. In John 18 verse 3, the, it is called lampas. It, it's more like a torch held by those who came in the night to arrest Jesus. Is, is the same rendition. The lampas is more of a torch, a larger, a brighter lamp than that which is normally used in the homes. They came with their lampas. It was a burning lamp. It was a bright lamp. It was an important lamp. They came with their lampas. Today, just like the ten virgins, we have the lampas in various forms. We have the word edition. We have the documented edition, the hard copy. We have the soft copy. We have, we have the Bible. I'm talking about the Bible in illiteracy. And these ten virgins, they were all carrying the word of God. They were carrying the Bible. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in verse 2, Though they were all virgins, though they belonged to the same church, though they professed the same faith, there are differences or there is a difference. A group was wise. Though they all professed the word of God and proclaimed the word of God, a group wise and another foolish. I want to ask today, is it the case that in your church and mine, we have foolish virgins and we have wise virgins? I am scared for myself. Which group am I in? Am I part of the wise or I am part of those who are the foolish? I'm talking about the, the, the crisis of dying lambs. The Bible says all these ten virgins, look at the community again. They went out to meet their Lord. As I indicated, they are all seven-day Adventists. All had lambs and vessels for oil. For a time, there was no difference between them. There was a similarity. There was no difference between those who are wise and those who are foolish. Ladies and gentlemen, before the coming of Jesus, just before probation will end, in the church of God, there will be no difference. Make no mistake. There will be no difference. But indeed, from a superficial perspective, we are all the same. But in the real analysis of our lives, by what we profess, by what we are, we are not the same. There are some within our ranks that are wise. There are some within our ranks that are foolish. Permit me, the question today is, are you a fool or you are among the wise? Every church member must interrogate themselves. You have the Sabbath school. You have the spirit of prophecy. You have the Bible. You believe in the doctrines of the church. You profess the doctrines of the church. I dare say we preach the doctrines of the church. But the question is, there is a difference. There is a difference in our rank. Some are wise and some are fool. All of them had the lamb. They have the vessel with them, and then White made a statement, Christ's object lesson, page 408. She says, With a church that leaves before Christ's second coming, 
all have a knowledge of the scripture. All have heard the message of Christ near approach and confidently expect his appearing. Did you hear that? Look at this. Before the coming of Jesus, all have a knowledge of the scripture. All have heard the message of Christ near approach. And guess what? Everyone was confident that they are going to see their Lord. There is what we call a, a state, a state of a state of deception because of a life of duplicity, because of a life of ineptitude within the church of God. People who are foolish will be thinking they are wise. They are expecting Jesus. When the church is singing, lift up the trumpet. And loud, let it ring. Jesus is coming again. Cheer up, pilgrim. Be joyful and sing. Everyone sing it. When we say echo it hilltop, proclaim it in place. Jesus is coming again. When we say tempest arise, everyone is saying heavens of earth. Tell the vast one the throne. Jesus is coming again. Nations are angry. By this we do know. Jesus is coming again. Knowledge increase. Men run to and fro. When we sing this song, every Everyone, both the wise and the fools, we sing it together. But verse 4 gave a serious indication. The Bible says, but the wise took with them oil in their vessels with their lamps. The fools, they are without the oil. But the wise, they carried oil with them with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and all fell asleep. Take notes. Not to bother too much the oil. You read Zechariah chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1 to verse 14. It is a known secret. We are talking to believers. It's a representation of the Holy Spirit. When I'm talking tonight about the crisis of a dying lamb, we are talking about the destitution of the Holy Spirit. The unavailability of the spirit of truth. There is a crisis in the land. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am scared for my soul. And for the soul of our church is the case, the case. We have become so mechanical. When last did we hear the prompting of the Holy Spirit? I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's with me. Whatever men may say, I see his hands of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's all. He lives. Christ Jesus lives in me. God in us. Before the coming of Jesus, there will be a delay. This message, this everlasting gospel came to this country in 1888. It is 132 years. Men have preached this. Women are proclaimers. Children are preaching. Where is the coming of this Jesus? We are called Seventh-day Adventists. We believe in the fourth commandment. We believe in the return of Jesus. We believe in the entire inspiration of scripture. But a time of delay. A time of delay is a period when we were expecting our Lord to come. But he has not appeared. There is a time of delay. During this time of delay, all slumbered. May I hasten to make a statement right now. In this Christian journey, every one of us, before Jesus will come, will experience our slumbering period. A time where faith will grow cold. A time where love for Christ will dissipate. A time where lackadaisical and reckless and careless attitude will now characterize our Christian experience. And there was a delay. And all of them, all of them slumbered. All slumbered. And whilst they slumbered, the Bible says they slept in their slumber. The difference will be made clear. At the period of slumbering, the Bible says in verse 6 of Matthew 26, at midnight, a cry was heard. Listen to this very carefully. At a time
time the heart of the church will run cold when there is a lifelessness when people don't care anymore about spiritual things when there is bitterness and resentment when, 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 when life when life is more important it's all about these things at the time when we slumber at the time of spiritual drowsiness at a time of spiritual laziness, at a time of, 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 of spiritual ineptitude, at such a time. The Bible says, when faith is growing cold, that's number two, sir. And at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. It reminds me of Martin Luther. It reminds me of the pioneers of our church. At midnight, to the Seventh day Adventist, the midnight cry is such a strategic cry. A cry to call the world that Jesus is coming again. And then White says, but in the parable, so it is now a time of waiting intervenes. Faith is dry. And when the cry is heard, behold, the bridegroom cometh. Many are unready. They have no oil in their vessels. With the alarms, they are destitute of the Holy Spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, at a time, Jesus is just about to come. One of the greatest challenges the church is going to face, and it is facing now, is that we do not have the Holy Spirit. We do not know by experience what it is to be led by the Holy Spirit. When last did the Holy Spirit communicate to you? Jeremiah says, you hear a voice behind you saying, move to the right or move to the left. At the midnight, at the verge of the coming of Jesus, many will be unready. Why would they be unready? Destitutes of the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, as I ask you, it goes to me myself. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Jesus says in the book of John 14, he says when he is gone, John 14, 15, 16, he will send another comforter, the spirit of truth. He will live inside you. Jesus has gone 2,000 years ago. Do you have the Holy Spirit that is God in you? And then why says without the spirit of God, a knowledge of his word is of no avail. The theory of truth, unaccompanied by the Holy Spirit, cannot quicken the soul or sanctify the heart. It is not just a matter of studying Sabbath school. It's not just a matter of just studying. The, no, it, 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 it is more than that. Without the Spirit of God, a knowledge of his word is of no avail. The theory of truth unaccompanied by the Holy Spirit, cannot quicken the soul. The messages will come. Jesus will speak himself. It will be of no effect. Why? The indwelling power of the Holy Spirit is destitute. Is the Seventh-day Adventist church in Ghana. Do we have the Holy Spirit in the church? The book of Joel chapter 2, verse 28 says, In those days, I will pour my spirit on all flesh. And, 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 and your sons and your daughters, they will prophesy. Do we have the indwelling of the spirit? In the book of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, he says, And I will pour my spirit when you receive power. You will be my witnesses in Judea and Samaria and the outermost part of the world. The question today is this, is our Judea, have we finished the work in Judea? Have we finished the work in our Samaria? Have we finished the work in the outermost part of the world? In the midst of this coronavirus, in the midst of this pandemic, people are dying every day. The Seventh-day Adventist Church cannot do much as it is expected. Why? We do not have the Holy Spirit. We have been baptized. We have been ordained as deacons, as elders, and as pastors. Let us ask ourselves very, very genuinely, do we have the Holy Spirit? And then why says, and I quote, 
one may be familiar with the commands and the promises of the Bible. But unless the Spirit of God set the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error. And they will fall under the masterful temptation of Satan. Did you hear that? Let me read that again. One may be familiar with the commands and promises of the Bible. But unless the Spirit of God set the truth home, the character will not be transformed. Without the enlightenment of the Spirit, men will not be able to distinguish truth from error. And they will fall under the masterful temptation of Satan. Ladies and gentlemen, the crisis in the church today is that we have dying lamps. And the Bible says in verse 8, And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lambs are dying. In the church today, lambs are dying. In the house of God today, lambs are dying. The foolish now know their foolishness. With arrogance, with, with self-conceitedness, they felt they were just like every other person within the church of God. But it is only a matter of time. God will separate the wheat from the tars. And the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil. For our lambs are dying. It is within the waiting time. Lambs are dying. Is your lamp dying? Is your lamp burning? Or oh, the lamp is dying, verse 9. But the wise answer saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go to those who sell and buy for yourself. No one can substitute it for us. No one can do what we need to do in the inner chamber of our homes. When we go to the altar and cry to God, holding the horn of the altar and say, Spare your people, Lord, until redemption come to Israel. No one can do for us. I like our hymn which says, Hymn 595, Let every lamb be burning bright. The darkest hour is nearing. The darkest hours of earth's long night before the Lord's appearing. Then trim your lambs, my brethren dear. Then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master coming draweth nigh. Let every night be burning. The second says, say, though thousand comely slumber on. The last great message sparing. We will rest our living faith upon his promise of returning. Then trim your lambs, my brethren dear. Then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master's coming draweth now. Let every night be burning. The third standard says, his word our lamp. His truth our guide. We cannot be mistaken. Though dangers rise on every side. We shall not be forsaken. Then trim your lambs, my brethren dear. Then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master coming, draw it now. Let every night be burning. I love the last stanza. The last stanza says, Then let good works and faith appear to help the world around us. Obedience bring the blessing now. When faith is firmly bound us, then trim your lambs, my brethren dear. Then trim your lambs with godly fear. The master's coming, draw it now. Let every now be burning. At the time lambs are to be burning, many lambs are dying. The class represented by the foolish virgins, they are not hypocrites. They are even better than us. They have a regard for the truth. They have advocated the truth. I'm quoting Ellen Why? Price of the lesson. They are attracted to those who believe the truth. 
take note of them. They represent the class that are called the foolish virgins. And then why says they are not hypocrites. They have a regard for the truth. They love the work of God. They are passionate about the work of God. They support it with their money. They preach about it. They pray about it. They promote it. It is no justification that you are among the wise. No matter your zeal, no matter your commitment, your, no matter your eloquence, no matter the power behind your speech, no matter your prayer life, the Bible says they are not just any kind. They are virgins, meaning they are not hypocrites. They regard the truth. They are not the liberals, if you so permit, if there is anything like that. They advocate the truth. They are attracted to the truth. When they see the truth about health reform, they are interested. Dress reform, they are interested. The truth about the latter rain, they are interested. Truth about outreach, they are interested. But they are still among the foolish. Why? Ellen White says they have not yielded themselves to the Holy Spirit. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try me, O oh Savior. This should be the prayer at the verge of the crisis of earth history. This should be the preoccupation of every seven day Adventist young person. Has the Lord searched me? Has the Lord tried me? Has the Lord set within my heart? The Bible says, Ellen White says, the ten virgins are watching in the evening of this earth history. All claim to be Christians. All have a call, a name, a lamb, and all profess to be doing God's service. All apparently wait for Christ's appearing. But five are unready. Five will be found surprised. Five will be found dismayed. Five will be found outside the banquet hall. Why? Is the crisis of dying lambs. In the parable, the wise virgins held oil in their vessels with their lamps. Their lights burn with undimmed flame throughout the night of watching. In the time where everyone's faith was, was dying, they themselves felt tired. The spirit of God was in them in their weakness. The Bible will say, I, I am your strength. In their weakness, they are still burning with their lamps. The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight. At midnight meaning at a time there will be darkness upon the earth. Isaiah chapter 60. Gross darkness upon the people. Thus in the night of spiritual darkness, God's glory is to shine forth through his church in lifting up the, the, the bow down and comforting doors that mourn all around us. I heard the wails of a world in sorrow. Listen to Ellen White, Christ of Death, lesson page 408. Thus in the night of spiritual darkness, God's glory is to shine forth through his church. For what? In lifting up the bow down and comforting those that are mourn all around us. I heard the wails of a world's sorrow, coronavirus, pandemic, death, sickness, strange diseases on every hand are the needy and the distressed. It is to our aid in relieving and softening life's hardship and misery. But we ourselves, we are destitute. We are destitute because our lambs are dying. Verse 10. I'm about to wrap it up. While they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And who were ready went in with him to the door or to the wedding. And the door was shut. So there was a tie. People who refused to do what they were to do are now found wanting. May I not be a man. May I do what must be done now. Hold the horn of the altar. Make Christ my ruler. 
Make him my shepherd. Make him my Lord. Make him my savior. Make him my redeemer. Make him the ruler of my life. So that at midnight, when men are running hilter scatter in search of the lamb, in search of their oil, may the door not be shut. The Bible says afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open for us. And he answered and said, I say to you, I do not know you. Jesus said, I do not know you. That is the worst statement. It reminds me of Matthew chapter 7. From verse 14 down to verse 21, 22, 23. And I will tell them plainly. I do not know you. Could it be, after all the struggles in this world, after all the pain, Jesus will say, I did not know you. The Bible concluded by saying, Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. Today, I want to ask you a question. The question I want to ask is a simple question. Do you have a relationship with this Jesus? Do you have a relationship with the spirit we are talking about? I want us to sing the song. If you do not, all is not lost. Matthew 11 verse 28, come unto me, all you that are laboring. Laboring for the Holy Spirit. Laboring with dying lambs. Come to Jesus. He's able to make it. Our sister is going to help us sing this song. If you are in your homes, wherever you find yourself, if you can, I want you to join us and be upstanding. You stand wherever you are, if you can. Join us. Those of you who want to go on your knees, you can go on your knees and prayerfully or bow down your head in a very prayerful manner and listen to the song as it ministers to you. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. as we pray father in heaven what a privilege for the power of your word and the guiding rod of the spirit of prophecy we are the verge of the midnight the cry will soon be blurred maybe from the east or from the west 
a hand will begin to appear. It will keep expanding. You are going to call the works on earth to be ended. We pray today, everyone under the sound of your voice, including myself and my family, may we make it to your kingdom. If there are rights, we need to make wrongs, we need to make right. If there are sins, we need to confess. If there are behavioral patterns, we need to let go. Let your spirit lead us, O oh Lord. Let us make amends while it is still probationary time. Bless that child of yours listening. Bless that woman. Bless that man. Until tomorrow we meet again in the same place, the same time. By the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the lamp of God, and the fellowship of the spirits abide with us. That will keep our lamps burning. In Jesus' name, amen. When Jesus comes according to Matthew chapter 25, he's going to ask us only six questions. Did you feed the hungry? Did you clothe the naked? Did you visit the prisoner? Did you bring the stranger in? Did you give water to the thirsty? And on Hope TV, yeah, the fundraising strong Bamufie. Yeah, two days go one million. No, be a man intensity, sir. You bet me you one million. You bet donate to be near their support the government of Ghana fund our establishment. You bet to turn near man near the Bia hospitals. A fame of bro phone, we see an Indian car. Sabre, you want to share or be at the fee, be no more be an Indian. Yan so within these two weeks and yet me, I adore the above. Yan Kai said, Faith without works is dead. GD and human numono, a GD away. And in Tian Sir, but see a back in GD. With the new man. Now, young quiet to me, yeah, as a TV station, we need your support to support this Go One Million campaign fundraising of Hope Television. You can send your donation to us through merchant number 547132. You can preface your message with Hope Fundraising. And I'll pass all your bank transfers as well. Your number is 6010. One nine zero six five seven Zenith Bank Head Office my Branch Accra. Yeah, God richly bless you. My not yes way, my not Hope Channel Changing Lives.